Oh wait. <laughs> I'm like, why does it look so different behind me? I didn't turn on the orange lights at all. Okay, that looks more like my set. All right, so today we are talking about the directorial debut of Max and Sam Eggers, who are related to Robert Eggers of horror fame. I think they're brothers. So the Front Room is a psychological horror movie starring Brandy Norwood as Belinda, a newly pregnant mother, as she navigates the trials of connecting with the baby under the eye of her eccentrically religious mother-in-law, Solange, played by Katherine Hunter. Right away, this movie introduces itself as like an exploration between these two women, this modern black woman and this like hyper evangelical racist old woman. She wants to like force her ideas of traditional motherhood on Belinda. And I feel like that theme was apparent in the trailer as well, which made me and I think a lot of other people excited to go see this. I feel like religious horror is having its moment lately, especially the past couple of years, especially, especially Christianity specifically and motherhood pregnancy. That's having a moment this year. Unfortunately, when it comes to the front room, this theme is never leaned into any more than like surface level stuff. Everything is just very like straight forward metaphor, which was a little disappointing to me. I kind of wished it went further. Within this home, Belinda and her husband's home, it becomes like a microcosm to represent colonialism. So you have Belinda, who's a professor of like anthropology or something like that. She studies like matriarchal religions when we used to worship goddesses. And she has all these like statues and depictions of like the goddess, the divine feminine. Then we have Solange who comes into Belinda's home and replaces all of this with Christian iconography. It's pretty on the nose. As I'll get into in this review, I feel like is the main problem. But I think Brandy and Catherine uh, were there to lean into the craziness. Like I loved watching the two of them bounce off of each other on screen. They made the movie worth watching, in my opinion. Um, I think it's a shame they just let the insane buildup of energy between the two of them just fizzle out instead of letting that energy explode. <laughs> and this is gonna, this is gonna sound how it sounds, but it, it felt like like edging almost in a way, like it was just got us there and then just stopped and I was like what the fuck? <laughs> I also kind of felt like the tone of the movie was off. Going in I'd heard this was supposed to have elements of comedy and I kept seeing this described as a dark comedy and similar descriptors. Um, for me that tone never really landed. It was more just like random spots of comedy in the movie like where they tried to make it happen and that kind of just reminded me like Oh yeah, this was supposed to be comedic. The movie did work, however, on this idea that, it's not even an idea, it's just a, a thing, a real thing, that black women are the strongest of us. Um, Belinda has to deal with being pregnant and taking care of an incontinent old racist woman. And then she gives birth and has to deal with a newborn and taking care of an incontinent old racist woman in a literal montage of piss and shit. One thing, if you look up the reviews, <laughs> for this movie. That's one thing they pretty much all have in common, that, that this movie has an incredible amount of uh, human waste in it. <laughs> so the entire time this movie is going on, it felt like we were building up to something crazy, right? Especially for Belinda, who gets thrown into this entire situation. She finds out about her husband's family, literally like right before all of this happens. Like he, never had told her about his stepmother Solange or anything like that until his dad gets sick and then she finds out about all this and then he dies and then all of a sudden you know like she's just kind of reacting to everything because what else can you do and then he's not there for most of the movie not helping her with really anything um and then having to deal with Solange who is a menace and it starts to become apparent that Solange is doing all this on purpose like she's pissing and shitting herself on purpose um she doesn't need the canes that she walks around with she's just being a fucking menace and racist to boot 
And so all, all of this is just like adding on and piling on and compounding on each other the entire time. And then the ending, don't get me wrong, Belinda deserved the happy ending. If it's one thing this movie does right is to give her her flowers at the end. Um, but overall the ending was kind of a let down. If I were to pull something nice out of it, I feel like there is something poetic, like frustratingly poetic about the fact that Belinda's having to deal with this the entire movie and she even ends it, finally ends it, like in the dead of night while her husband peacefully sleeps. She still has to to deal with this and she goes and smothers Solange um, taking care of her problem and her husband's problem while he's just fucking snoozing upstairs and doing nothing yet again. But after all that Belinda had went through, like I would have smothered her in like 15 minutes of meeting her. So I feel like after dealing with Solange for as long as Belinda does in this movie could have been a little bit more. I don't know. So what could have been an interesting and crazy in a good way story about these two women in conflict ends up being like an uninspired exploitation movie because even in that arena this movie doesn't really go anywhere. I feel like a broken record uh, but there were some cool scenes like Solange's introduction where she's like draped in this opaque mourning veil surrounded by people and it, it kind of seems like they're acolytes like they're worshiping her almost and she like rises from her chair with her two canes like this monster. It's such a striking thing to see that introduction and to see her moving around with those two canes, making all of this noise, like this booming kind of noise. Like her presence just demands all of the attention. But I feel like even those canes are ditched early on <laughs> in the movie. Um, and it just kind of devolves into like, man, aren't old people just gross? Ew, how scary. Like, okay, <laughs> I don't think there's anything wrong with exploring, I think a very like normal and human apprehension to getting older um but like do something with it i don't know like do something different we have a lot of hack exploitation movies already overall i feel like this movie was just kind of all over the place there were some good moments some moments that i feel like were on the verge of being inspired and then others that were just you know pretty formulaic and predictable if anybody puts any weight behind numbers I gave it a three out of five on Letterboxd. Like I don't think it was bad for a directorial debut. I feel like that's a pretty good debut. Granted I'm sure they kind of got like a, a bit of a Nepo baby treatment being related to a bit more of an established director <laughs> and having the resources that come with it. But for a debut I feel like this could have been a lot worse. It could have been so much worse. So again, don't think it was terrible. Don't think I'll be revisiting it anytime soon though. So if you went out to go see, so if you've seen The Front Room already, let me know in the comments what you thought about it. Thank you for watching this movie review. For more horror movie reviews and horror movie discussions and all things related to the horror genre in all of its forms, maybe consider subscribing. I don't know. I'll see you soon in a new video. Until then, stay strange. Bye.